Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning. Uh, the quilt that is under Myra and Pookie is an antique that's not in great shape, but it's a Dresden plate. Um, it was done, oh, by Gwen's great-grandmother, I believe. So it's old. Um, okay, but I do need to show off a crocheted quilt. Some of you may have seen these. They were going around on Etsy and Instagram. Um, but Teresa Carpenter, I had put out a plea for someone who knew how to crochet to make a cow quilt for Gwen. And Teresa Carpenter was nice enough to step up to the plate and gave Gwen a cow um, for her shower. And then she said, oh, that was, I had so much fun making it. I'm going to do the horse too, because I think grandma needs a horse at her house for when Sarah comes to visit. So it's a nice big baby quilt, but then it has all these fun parts to pull on. <laughs> Little horsey head. So. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. This thing is, and it's so soft. It is so adorable. And it's got a floofy tail too. Floofy curly tail. So that will get good use, I'm quite certain. Uh, but it's very soft. I'm, it, I may steal it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I crocheted many, many, many moons ago. And I haven't done it since probably junior high or high school. I used to crochet ponchos. Remember wearing ponchos back in the seventies? They were pretty popular then. Um, but anyway, so poor little Sarah, she's going to be, she's due in two weeks and she's going to be inundated with farm animal, everything between the quilt that we made and the horse and the cow crocheted blankies and living on the farm. <laughs> she's going to have lots of fun. So uh, I don't know about the rest of you. I think most of the country is under uh, excessive heat warnings. But let me just tell you, the humidity here right now is about 100%. You could cut it with a knife. Pictures down at the shore. And we were down there a few years ago and had this happen. Literally, you're sitting in a cloud bank on the beach. It is just a wet, white mist that you can't see your hand in front of your face. Um, our windows in our house are all fogged up and steamy. Uh, walk outside when well, we were outside at 7 15 to take care of the horses and chickens and it literally takes your breath away the minute you step out the door your glasses fog up it's a mess <laughs> so um yesterday i put the minis out earlier in the day and brought them in so they weren't out they don't have really have much shade in their paddock uh brought them in early i had the chickens out and they literally every one of them dug a uh, dirt pit in the shade and laid on their sides panting all afternoon. Um, we have fans on everybody. I washed the horses two days ago. They're going to get hosed down when they come in today because it's just, if I hose them down and stand them under the fan, it, it will help with their cooling. Um, this weather is really hard on the animals. The dogs literally are outside for three minutes and then back in because speaking of, I think you have one out there barking. <laughs> um, 
it is just way too hot, especially especially for these short nosed breeds. But what I really wanted to talk about uh, two things that we see very commonly as soon as this sort of weather happens, and I'm sure that it started yesterday in the emergency rooms, and we'll see it today in our clinics and tomorrow. Uh, once the heat and the humidity get to this level, we first of all, we have a lot of dogs who love to swim and uh, breeds like golden retrievers are great swimmers. They love to be in the pools. Was you woofing? Oh, you... oh, come, here. come here, you little bad news bear. Georgie had a haircut yesterday. I know we're not supposed to trim our spaniels short, but these guys are so hot. I'm even breaking the rules there. They needed to get trimmed down. So we took off the top layer. Um, so the, the dogs that are swimming, a lot of times they don't ever get dry. They're in and out of the pool, in and out of the pool, in and out of the pool. And in areas that aren't exposed, like under the back legs, under the tail, uh, especially if these are really thick coated dogs, they stay moist all the time. And bacteria love to grow in those hot, humid, moist, dark places. So something that we'll see every year guaranteed are uh, skin infections with Pseudomonas. And Pseudomonas bacteria, any of you who work for a veterinarian, you know what that, you can smell it when it walks in the door. It makes a greenish blue discharge that's really disgusting and it has a very specific odor. We grow it out of ears a lot of times in these floppy eared dogs and under the tails, back ends, hot spots up on the butts of those long coated dogs who just get damp. And, uh, and then once we get that skin infection, the next thing we get is flies and maggots. So this, this is when our, our job gets really fun. This is uh, since I've lost my sense of smell, it's come back somewhat, but I'm pretty glad it's damped down when these things come in because they are really disgusting. And, you know, it's not just outside dogs that are uncared for that develop these problems. We see a lot of family pets that are well cared for that the owners are just not aware. So if you have, uh, you know, Huskies, Malamutes, Samoyeds, uh, the Golden Retrievers, these thick coated breeds, those are the ones that we, German Shepherds, those are the ones we see it in most commonly. Uh, for the ones that are real short coated, you know, the, the Amstaffs and the Greyhounds and the Dobies and the Rotties, we don't see it as commonly because it's easier to see through the coat but a lot of times it's down under that top layer and you can't see what's going on down there. Dogs that have diarrhea, please make sure that you get them well cleaned up underneath because if there is any fecal material there, that's gonna attract flies. And uh, that's how we get the maggots. Maggots are basically fly eggs that were laid and hatch. And in this kind of weather, they'll hatch in 12 to 24 hours and you'll have an infestation that you won't believe. So any kind of wounds, you wanna really uh, make sure you have them covered. Uh, Booger, our little mini, has a couple uh, little rubs on his face and on his uh, ankles. And I've been putting the wound balm on them, which is a um, an herbal cream that's on our website. Um, and that's really helpful. It keeps the flies away and uh, keeps them from getting infected. So everybody, Make sure that you're checking all those areas. Keep your pets inside when it's this hot, this humid. Go out early in the morning. I've got the minis out already at quarter to eight this morning. They were out in the backfield. Normally, they don't go out till about 1.30 and they spend the afternoon. I've had to flip them and put them out in the morning. So, um, oh, that's the way they used to do. Uh, it's, yeah, when morning. we've boarded our horses in the summer, they go out at night and in during the day under their fans because it's just too hot. I don't like to leave our guys out overnight when we're not awake to make sure that they're okay out there. Um, plus they don't have shelter out back if it started to have a thunderstorm or something. And I really don't want to be out there running around in a thunderstorm trying to get minis in the barn. So we'll, we'll see how we handle that in the future. But um, do you yes. have any chicken stories from the weekend? Oh share? my gosh, do I have chicken stories to share from the weekend? So. <laughs> You've all seen the videos of my mom. We call her the chicken whisperer. And she goes out to put the chickens back in their coop after they've been outside. And the chickens see her in her little bucket. And they it's like the Pied Piper. They jump in line and they're running behind her. And all the little chickens run right into their coop. Occasionally, she has, she has one that really likes to be carried. We're about to have a cat fight. She has one that really likes to be carried. Well, so since mom's back's been bothering her, which 
cold laser is helping chiropractic and cold laser is helping her immensely. She's looking a lot better. Um, Hugh and I are on horse and chicken duty. Now the horse duty is not so bad. I I'm good at that. Um, and Hugh can even wrangle the, the little minis. So it, that's not so bad, but the chickens, honest to God, I am not the chicken whisperer apparently because I go out there and shake the bucket and say, come on, chicky, chicky, chicky. And I get one or two and the rest of them scatter in a hundred directions and six chickens go a hundred ways. It's amazing. And so Hugh kind of brings up the rear and is trying to shoo the chickens along behind me. And generally we can get two or three to go in the coop. And then it's a free for all chasing down the other chickens and trying to carry them. The other day I had Hugh with one under each arm and I had a couple, it, it, they're a mess and you go to put one in the coop and two more run back out. And I said, you know, if we had a third person out here to video this, it would be pretty funny. So anyway, <laughs> chicken wrangling 101. Life on the farm. Yeah, life on the farm. Hugh and I are not good at chicken wrangling. Uh, supporters, we'll see you tonight. We're going to do canine cognitive dysfunction according to Chinese uh, veterinary medicine principles. Um, it's from my hospice and palliative care class that I took a year or so ago. Thought we'd have fun with that. So we'll see you guys tonight at seven. Your dog got pneumonia from too much water play. That can happen. They can actually die from intaking too much water when they're swimming. Georgie, I found a knot, son. Driving Nanny crazy. are afraid of the chickens. There's no herding. <laughs> Those chickens chase our dogs. <laughs>